So in a way, you are building building a picture or a painting, if you like, um, which just happens to be in black and white. I'm Hugh Arnold. I'm a photographer, and this picture here is called Fred. It was taken uh, two years ago in Gozo, and it's part of a series uh, called Agrivida. Decided one day I would never ever take a picture in my life again. We were living in a at the time and we were trying to sell our house and it fell through. And after one amazing year there, we came back and one day I said, okay, that's it. I'm never taking a picture again. This is final. And I put away all my, uh, my studio, I packed it all up. There was one box on the floor in the corner and I went down to pick it up. And I looked through it and it had all my favorite negatives in it. And I looked through, and there was one picture of a girl out in the water that I'd taken 20 years before in the Seychelles on a shoot. And I'd never been indulgent, and I blew it up very big. And I said, this is what I want to do. I decided I went off and to get um, training to be a scuba diver, um, which absolutely terrified me. And it took quite a while before I got over that fear, you know? We decided, what do I do? I want to do news, which I love. Mm -hmm. I want to do it underwater, but what's my story? And it seemed logical to start with birth. Um, and so I went through, essentially, um, through all the, develop the phases of development from, from conception through to womanhood. And, um, and subliminally in the water, we, 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 we got um, stopped by the um, by the weather. So I continued about six months later with um, Polina and a friend of hers from New York, who also was a professional swimmer. And, um, and we, we, we completed the whole thing. And from that, we made a book. And then I had exhibitions in London, and I had exhibitions in Chicago, and Porto Montenegro, Mykonos, places like that. They go down and they do lots of repetitive movements, always slightly different, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I stay down because, you know, with the pressure of the, of the water and everything, you can't keep popping up every five seconds. Um, and they also work it out between themselves as well. And they give me surprises, which is fantastic. Um, I spend about six and a half hours in the water every day, um, which, is, which means that I, I practice for, for weeks, months even, uh, going up and down the swimming pools, underwater. It's like making a film in a way. Um, you, you, you have all your ideas and you take bits, uh, bits of, 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 of images and at the end of it all, when you feel you've got what you want, you put all those images together. At the same time, um, I, I film everything as well. I have a GoPro on top of the camera and I have a GoPro underneath, um, which I put on slow motion. And at the end of it all, we, we, we put together films with music, uh, which is kind of, kind of a different feeling in a way. The graphics in a black and white picture are just so much stronger. Um, you can really, like with these bodies, for example, here, you can really, really feel you want to touch the body, you want to eat the body, you know, it's like, it's like it looks like a, a recipe or something like that, you know? Okay. Uh, and I think it tells a story much better, you know, it goes back to, you know, the days of Fellini and, and, and directors like that. Um, but on the other hand, you know, colour can be the choice, it just depends which yeah. works best for for the picture, but certainly with this picture here, it's um, it's it's much better uh, in black and white, in my opinion. Everything is printed on metallic paper. Everything is printed in London. If you take away the light from that picture, it just becomes mm -hmm. nothing. You see, and it just becomes an ordinary black and white picture. Uh, and but just one light. I mean, I think even with two lights, oh, uh, um it would be would be probably even better, but it's uh, it's perfect as it is, um, and the, the, the water drops are wonderful. Um, yeah. With this picture, um, which in a way is different from the other in the same series, 
Um, this came from an accident in the sense that normally what I do is I have a storyboard and I have a pretty fixed idea of the title of the picture beforehand and pretty well the composition as well. Um, so I shoot that in mind, you know. But with this picture here, when I was doing the editing, um, which was a massive exercise, it took literally months and months because I had 50,000 images, um, I found that tiny piece at the top there and I realized that from that um, I could form a tree. And then what would I do with that tree? So basically I would um, talk about energy and it's a panoramic picture so why not put a second tree in? And the tree on the right basically has become the giver of energy if you like. There's a lot of energy going along, a lot of action um, and the reason for the trees, in a way, is that trees give life, in a sense. Um, the, the leaves of the, of the trees give oxygen, and oxygen, in its own way, gives energy and life. And so, how do I represent that? There are no leaves here. So, I decided that the, 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 the tree would be spewing these fish. And the fish um, uh, are, are coming, and they're feeding the other tree, which is kind of slightly darker, more in the shade, more passive if you like. Um, and so the tree becomes tree of life and the fish um, were shot. Um, I mean, I was swimming through the fish. We, we, we threw bread in there uh, to attract them. Um, I was swimming through these shoals of fish and, um, and to put them into the picture, of course, you start with a blank canvas. And the blank canvas in this particular case is some um, scene underwater, always different. Um, the sea, uh, the top of the sea becomes the bottom of the picture. And the bottom of the sea, the rocks, uh, become kind of the symbolic sky, if you like. It's all printed on metallic paper. Um, if you look closely, you really see the wonderful qualities of the fish. Um, yeah, it's a gargantuan thing. It can go up to six meters um, without losing any quality at all. Um, and I think you can go on looking at it forever. You're doing something which no one's done before, basically. There's no reference. Uh, you can't go onto the internet and look for this kind of work, which in a sense is, is, is wonderful because you are breaking new territory. Um, but at the same time, it's like, what are you going to do? You are, you know, during the preparation period, which takes maybe, well, certainly a year and a half, you, you are looking on the internet, you are looking for things that inspire you, um, and you can be extremely diverse in that. You, you will see dancers, certain movements. Uh, Caperinia, for example, that was something that was very strong in the last series, um, which helps to explain what you want. I go from the Sistine Chapel, which I've never been to, but I've seen obviously the images on the ceiling, um, which are completely timeless. Um, which didn't have any clothes, and I think the Pope made someone cover the clothes, you know, put certain clothing. Then, you know, the Renaissance painters, uh, Picasso, uh, for sure, Matisse, uh, he has that lovely series of cut-out bathers in blue. Um, a bit of everything. Um, but ultimately, it's about finding the answers within yourself. Uh, it's about exploring new territory, um, and it's about stimulating yourself as well. And I went into a swimming pool with the diving gear. It completely terrified me. It was, I had to let go. I had to essentially lose control and that was terribly difficult. And I'm a great swimmer and I swim almost every day. I've swum all my life and 
I then went into the sea uh, for the next stage of learning how to dive and all that stuff. And um, I probably, I'm probably the only person in the world who's been to like four countries to, to get their paddy license. I have never done uh, a single dive without having a camera in my hand. Um, which is, yeah, which is kind of weird in a way. And I think the great thing in a way of having a camera in your hand is that um, you forget where you are and, and it releases you in a way. And sometimes when I'm in our own pool at home, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, oh God, I've got to do another shoot. And I know that in a year, I'm going to do another shoot. And the whole thing terrifies me. Then I kind of brace myself. And I know that once I'm there, that I will completely let go.